Okay, so uh, welcome everybody uh, to the uh, Tuesday session of the <clears throat> dynamic uh, programming um, and reinforcement learning. So um, today I will walk you briefly through the uh, uh, through the general idea that we talked about last time. We will present also very briefly um, one of one of the uh, one of the exercises, which uh, is I think a nice example to to show how the how the basic structure works, and then the rest of um, of today and of uh, Thursday we will be discussing uh, a little bit uh, more. Uh, we will not discussing, but you will work on the on the exercises to implement the the stochastic dynamic uh, programming uh, problem. So let me just briefly uh, recap uh, what we talked about last time. Hold on. Okay, so last time uh, we talked a little bit about an extension of, um, of our general uh, approach, of our general dynamic programming approach. Um, remember that we were, um, that we wanted to know, oh, where's, where's, our, where's our problem? So basically what we, what we wanted to know was um, an optimal control path, just ignore the, the ST for the second, an optimal control path uh, that maximizes some sum of contemporaneous utilities and the new thing here was that we uh, that we do not really know exactly how the state uh, evolves. Um, so the only thing that we know is uh, we know the stochastic structure. This is at, at least our assumption up, up to now that we know the stochastic structure, or that we have a notion about the stochastic structure, how this how this state evolves. And um, Obviously, this uh, this resulted in a in a new aspect of uh, of the of the optimal control choice, namely that we that we basically cannot really stick to one uh, to one control path uh, or one control plan as a function of uh, the 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 realized state of of the state that we are in, but that we all always have to consider uh, the possible realizations of of this shock that drives the system into account as well. Um, nevertheless, uh, we, uh, uh, we are able also by taking, uh, by taking, those, um, by taking those stochastic uh, behavior of the, of the state of the system into account that we can write the general problem still as in this recursive structure that we, uh, that we had uh, all the time. Um, how, however, the, uh, uh, the the exact specification um, hinges a little bit on the idea what the stochastic structure really looks like. Uh, we focused on uh, uh, on on Markovian uh, stochastic structures, so situations where the uh, probability uh, for the realization of some specific shock is just a function of a finite history. Or even that is the that is the most simple case that we can consider that the probability of any realization of the shock is just totally independent uh, of its history. And if this was the case, so this is the thing that we that we talked about last time, then we are basically back to the same structure that we discussed before. Okay. The only thing um, that is that is different now is that we have to consider this expectation operator. Um, in, explicitly into account. So what does it basically mean? Well, this basically means that when defining uh, the optimal value, so when, when we think about the optimal uh, control, um, then I've told you, or we've told you, uh, that due to this recursive structure, this boils down to a relatively simple uh, trade-off, namely the trade-off between what is the payoff uh, as of today of, of increasing the, the control, for example? So what is, the, what is the contemporaneous effect? And what is the effect on the, on, the, on the value as of tomorrow? So basically what you do is you, you do not think about how the, the, how, how the structure of the, of the complete uh, control path would look like, but you just trade off uh, today versus the rest of your planning horizon. And now the new thing is, um, so 
before without, without having uh, any, any stochastic situation, we definitely knew what the state would be in that we are, or what the state is that we are in tomorrow. So uh, the, the trade-off was, was simpler in a sense. So we, we knew, at least in principle, we knew the potential future effects um, of the control. And now we do not exactly know that, but we only have a, a notion or a perception about uh, the, the expected effect that we will observe. Okay, so the, the only thing that, that differs here now is that I do not consider a trade-off between today and tomorrow, but I, I, I somewhat think about a trade-off um, between the contemporaneous effect, so as of today, versus the effect on tomorrow's situation in all the different states that could, that, that could happen. Okay, so what we basically have is we have the same problem which, which in, with an increased complexity, so to say. Okay, and this increased complexity or this, this, increased, um, this increased difficulty, so to say, to, to find uh, the, the control is hidden here in this expectation operator which is basically a sum. So what we have here is if you, if you write it down explicitly, and we, we will do that later on in the exercise, then you will see that here are a, a, lot of, a lot of parts of the sum, and all of those parts of the sum are obviously affected by the choice of the control today. So you, you, have, a, you have a more complex trade-off uh, between what happens tomorrow, because tomorrow is not just tomorrow, but there are many tomorrows. You know, depending on the on the on the on the on the realized shock uh, that that you have, and what you want to do, obviously, when when choosing today, you want to take into account those uh, for those many tomorrows uh, as of tomorrow. Um, I mean, uh, you know, philosophically speaking, there's there's only one tomorrow, time wise, but you know, of of different uh, of different uh, timelines that you could be in. Okay, so again, the basic, uh, the basic, um, the basic idea is is uh, very similar to what we had before. So we have to trade off this contemporaneous effect against the expected future effects. Okay, um, and the only thing that we need again, as we as we had before, is we need to know the functional form of this Bellman equation. So once we know how this would look like, plus the, uh, uh, the, the stochastic structure, obviously, we could very easily and very straightforward calculate the optimal control, okay? Suppose, for example, I mean, just, just, I'm, I'm just making this up, this, uh, this, this functional form would be a, a polynomial of second degree, of second order, okay? So that would be, I don't know, five times uh, s tau plus one, plus 10 times uh, s tau plus one uh, to the power of two. And since we know uh, the, the law of motion for s, s uh, tau plus one, we could just plug this in and just, and just write down or, or retry, retrieve explicitly um, the, uh, uh, the optimal control in this and for, for this problem for this situation for any realization so so uh, given any any uh, realization of the shocks that we are confronted with okay so again we we need to think somewhat how to get a handle on finding on finding this form of the value function this is this is always also in the stochastic case it's, it's always the 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 same approach okay so we need to find some somewhat how this how this functional form would look like. And in the finite horizon case, this is the one that we are considering here for the moment. This is relatively easy uh, in a sense because how, how, can we, uh, uh, how can we anchor this, this effect? So how, how, can we, how can we think about this functional form where we just start in the, in the last uh, planning uh, period? And once we have the last planning period, we can say something about um, it's, it's relatively straightforward to say something about the form of the value function in the last planning period in, at, at P 
capital T. Okay, and then using this information, we move on, so backwards through time, um, to determine every uh, control for every point in time. Okay, so this is basically what we are going to do. And and note that in the in the finite time horizon case, this functional form, okay, is always time that we are in. So at, at the at the situation that we are in. So the functional form in tau plus one could differ obviously from the functional form in tau. Okay, later on in the in the infinite horizon case, it turns out that this functional form is um, is is unique. Okay, this this was this contraction mapping uh, this this contraction mapping uh, result uh, that we basically find one functional form that fulfills uh, this Bellman equation. This is not necessarily the case here because we we consider basically every two points in time, right? But as the general structure is very similar, um, we we can we can use um, basically the same approach uh, that we that we did before. And when I walk you through one of the exercises, you will directly see that that it's it's only a, a minor um, and it it's not necessarily com um, a complication, but it, it it's just it's just more work. Okay. But as always, if you can delegate more work to, to, to a third party, in our case, the computer, this is not necessarily as bad as if, it, if, as if you were the one uh, doing this additional work. Although, obviously, uh, Mark, Mark will rightly complain that, that, that this has, has also limitations because, you know, it takes time. But, you know, for, for our situation, this is, um, this is I think, not, not the, the, the most relevant thing. Okay, do we have questions so far? As I said, I think the most the most straightforward way um, to to see the uh, um, the similarities to what we to what we did before could be or, or are if you write down this expectation operator thing explicitly. If you would write that down explicitly, you would directly see, okay, this is basically really the same to the things that we did before. Okay. Okay, then, then we talked a little bit about, uh, about the, did, we, did we already talk about that, about the general, uh, about the general approach? I think so. We did. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So uh, we, we talked about that. And uh, the, the last thing with well, the first auto condition, we, we, I, I walked you through that as well. Um, so the last thing uh, that I would like to uh, discuss with you today is uh, the, the betting game, uh, which, is, which is also um, an exercise from the, uh, from the size that uh, textbook. Um, and uh, what I what I did, I think we, we have a kind of solution manual, but additionally, I also, oh, hold on a second, I also wrote it, wrote it down explicitly once more uh, to, to walk you uh, through this. Can, can you read that? Okay, so basically um, you are confronted with uh, the, the following relatively simple game. Um, you, uh, uh, you, you play this game for capital T plus one rounds. Um, so you start in, in zero. And uh, what you have is you have some initial wealth and part of your wealth um, can, be, can be put into a game as a wager, okay? And with probability uh, p, you, you win this game. And with probability one minus p, you lose this game. And once uh, you, uh, you, you win this game, you receive, or when, when you lose this, this game, you, the, the wager is, is, is lost. 
And if you win this game, uh, you you receive basically uh, the 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 wager uh, in in addition to your uh, to your to to the to the initial wealth that you had. Okay, so um, in period zero, you have some wealth as zero, and you bet part of that, and then you may may win or may lose. Okay, and in case that you win the situation so your your new wealth in in s1 is just your initial wealth plus the the money that you've put into the into the betting pot okay so you receive basically the same that you that you uh, uh, that you put in there um and if you lose well then you lose the money that you put into the into the pot Right, and this is just S zero times uh, C zero. This is the amount of money uh, that you put into the lottery. So this is part of your part of your wager, okay? And since you play this a number of rounds, and you could obviously interpret. I mean, this is not this is not lit literally speaking. Uh, a time goes by, but those rounds, those logical steps, are very similar to uh, to to time going by. Okay, so you start with this. With an initial amount, play your rounds, and at the end of the day, uh, you you end up with a certain um, amount of 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 wealth. So when you hear period zero is basically closed, so you wake up again uh, in the next period, um, and you get and you can observe your your new uh, your your new wealth, and then you can start over again, uh, thinking about how how much. Uh, of this new wealth to put into the pot and, and to put into the game, right? So then you decide about uh, the C1 and so on and so on until the the game is finished. Okay, so this is this is the 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 general uh, the general idea. Okay, so the general situation. So this is this is just uh, conditional. So this is your wealth conditional upon winning, and this is your wealth conditional upon losing. So Obviously, whether you win or lose is a is a random variable, okay? And it could have um, basically it's a it's a it's a dummy, right? And it it could uh, it it has basically two outcomes, and we call those outcomes here one and minus one. So if you win, okay, you you receive uh, you receive this is uh, epsilon uh, t plus one. This is this would be the uh, the, uh, the the random shock. So whether you the situation whether you win or whether you lose in period t plus one. So if you win, okay, this is one. So the realization is one. If you lose, the realization is minus one. Okay. So in general, what this says is, okay, your wealth tomorrow is just the wealth today plus the, the amount of money that you've put at the beginning of the period, at the beginning of the round into the pot times, well, the outcome, which is if you win, it's just one. If you lose, it's just minus one. OK, the, these are the these are the two situations that you uh, that, that could occur. And you know <coughs> that the probability in every period that this occurs is just either P for the win situation and one minus p for the for the loss okay if if you if you lose and as i said we 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 basically need as an ingredient here at least up to now we need to have some idea about the stochastic structure so we need um we need to know uh, the outcomes that could happen we need to know the probabilities that could happen and also in general, we we would need some uh, um, some description how the uh, uh, stochastics are related or are interrelated be between time or rounds or, or what whatever your your measure of of going through is. Here, this is very simple. By implicit assumption, we have that this is independent. So this is the most easiest case. So the probability. Of, of winning tomorrow is is not a function of having won today because this is just totally independent of, of what you did today. Obviously, this is not necessarily and uh, this is not necessarily the case um, as we discussed last time. But uh, just 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 for 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 presentation, um, I think the the most easiest situation 
would be to just consider the case where this is independent. Okay, this is this is this is plain vanilla uh, uh, stochastic uh, process that you that you could think of. It's very very simple. Okay, it's not it's not very uh, difficult. You only have two outcomes, so binary outcomes, two probabilities. They're independent. Everything is very uh, very uh, uh, very nice uh, to handle. Okay, so now let us look. So what do we want to know? We want to know our uh, our betting strategy. Okay, what we like, what we would like to know is the following. We would like to know how much to bet. So this is our control. How much to bet every period until the the end of the uh, round. So what we are interested in is the fraction of our wealth that we that we are willing to put into the game in every period. It could be the case that it changes over every period, wh whatever, and all the prerequisites that we need for a dynamic problem are fulfilled here as well. So we have we have um, many rounds. So this is our dynamic, and the si the situations are interrelated. So your your choice today concerning how much to put into the pot obviously has um, a future effect. So it affects your your wealth as of tomorrow, but this implicitly affects the, the wealth. The day after tomorrow, and this implicitly affects the wealth the day after tomorrow, and so on and so on. Okay, this is the this is the general uh, the general game that we are that we are looking at. And what we want to do is we want to um, we want to find obviously this optimal path. Okay, the last thing um, that we need to uh, that we need to consider I, uh, this is just hidden in this in this a we we have to say something about how the objective function looks like, okay? Um, so, so in general, you would think, okay, I, I wanna, I wanna pick uh, this this batting strategy in order to maximize um, some uh, um, some objective function, and the objective function here is very simple. So, focus for the moment on the objective function. We say that in all periods except the the last period, there there's no there's no utility attached to that. And only in the last period, can, can you see that somewhere? I do not see the, the full screen. Do, do you see the, the full, the, uh, the thing that is on top? How can we know? Uh, good, good, good point. So I think that there should be something like that the, that the utility in the last period, so U capital T, is the lock of the of the wealth in that period? Yeah, that's visible. Okay, because I can I cannot see that. Okay, so basically you have uh, the, uh, uh, the the utility that you that you have is is the uh, the, the contemporaneous utilities which is zero. X period, so you basically enjoy just uh, the the fruits of your of your betting labor in the last period once the game is over. Okay, so once the game is over. You just realize how lucky you are, and then you, uh, then you, then you, uh, uh, then you receive utility from that. So there's no contemporaneous utility. You are not, you're not happy uh, to to win intermittently. So this is, you do not care. You just look at the last period. Okay, you are a cold, a cold-hearted player. Okay, so uh, um, in general, so we now have have, have to step back uh, uh, one, one step. So in in the the general Bellman equation. Is just defined as the maximum of the control that you pick, um, where you want to maximize the contemporaneous utility plus the expected value that you will experience as of tomorrow. Okay, and as I said, what we are looking at or what we are looking for is this control. Okay, so <clears throat> in this. In this case, in, with this simplification, uh, we can basically um, uh, divide the entire the entire uh, description of our problem into into two situations. So you can uh, we can uh, divide this into the last period. So what is what is the uh, uh, Bellman equation in the last period? Well, this is this is just uh, the utility function that you would receive from the last period. So this is just the log, uh, the natural logarithm of uh, the uh, uh, of the wealth that you have in capital T. 
um, and note this, that there's no randomness in the last period and there's also nothing to choose. Okay, so this is basically uh, just after you finish playing. Okay, then you then you count up the, the money that you have and uh, the, the log just uh, translates basically the money that you have in, in utility terms, okay, whatever, whatever that means. And in all other periods, okay, this contemporaneous utility is zero. So the only thing that matters here is the expected value as of tomorrow, okay? And what we are now trying to, uh, uh, trying to do is we're trying to pick the optimal control, okay? Um, and again, we do not know what, the, what, the, uh, what, what, this, what this looks like, except for one period, namely the last period, okay? So now let us look, are there, are there any questions up to now? So now for, for finding the optimal control, we, uh, we move uh, through, this, uh, through this problem starting in the last period, okay? The last period is very simple because this is just a description, right? The last period is, is, is characterized by some wealth that you have given the game that you've played and the utility that you receive. So not, nothing, nothing happens uh, really there, but you could go one period uh, uh, back in time, so to period t minus one, okay? In period t minus one, we can this this value that you might receive by choosing how much we want to we wanna put as a wager onto the bet, so we, we can control the amount, so the C capital T minus one, the, uh, uh, the, the amount of the, or the fraction of our wealth in capital T minus one, that we want to uh, that we want to bet, and we know <coughs> that due to the game, what will come out there is obviously random. So we are not sure what the S capital T will be. So in capital T after the game, we know that obviously, but in capital T minus minus one, we do not know that. Okay, we we have a we have a, a notion, a perception because we we know the game. And we can calculate that, but we really do not know what what exactly will be uh, the situation after we have chosen to to put uh, C capital T minus one times the wealth that you have there, so S T minus one into the into the pot. Okay, so uh, we would like to know what to do. What what would be the optimal thing to do here? Well, what we know is. <clears throat> by the uh, uh, by the definition of the Bellman equation here, this holds for for every for every point for every round in the game, so for every point in time, except for the last round. Okay, so we have the value that I have or that I attach to this game just before the last round is just the amount or the fraction of my wealth that I put into the game of the expected value that I have afterwards. So after the last game, the last round is played, okay? So what I know is, so I know two things. So basically, again, it would be awesome to say something about this right-hand side, because once I, if, if I could characterize the thing in the curly brackets, I know what the optimal strategy would be, right? This is just a very simple maximization problem. Um, and lucky for us, we know what, what there is in, in the curly brackets. So let's go step by step. We need to know the S capital T, we need to know the functional form V, and we need to calculate the, the expectation. So we have to say something about the expect, expectation operator. And every of the three things are known to us, okay? Because I, I know the game, since I know the game, I know what my wealth will be tomorrow or after the game has been played. Okay, this is just S capital T minus one times one plus the realized situation, whether I win or lose, times or oh, there's uh, and, and times the fraction of my wealth that I that I've put into the pot. I know the utility that I would receive once uh, the new wealth is realized, and finally, I can calculate the expected value. 
Okay, so I can explicitly write down the this ex, this expected value of the log of this thing. Okay, so what I do is I take the expression for S capital T, plug this in here, then I know the functional form, plug this in here, and finally this is this is this. Okay, and finally I have to calculate this expectation value, this expected value. But this is also relatively easy, right? Because I only have two uh, realizations that I could observe. So either the epsilon uh, capital T is one or it's minus one, and I know the probabilities. So this is P or one minus P, okay? And the only difference, so com coming back to, to similarities to what we, what we did before, um, when we talked about uh, when, when we walked you through the uh, uh, through the pen and paper exercise of finding the solution uh, for the uh, uh, for uh, for a deterministic case, the only thing we had here is, for example, a situation where say the p is just one. Okay, so this sum would just collapse to to one uh, expression. Okay, and the and the complication, so to say, when considering, uh, when considering, I mean, the technical complication when considering uh, stochastic uh, dynamic optimization is just a, a more complex calculation of, of this expression in the, in the square brackets, right? So with just two possible realizations, again, this is relatively simple, okay? So then in, instead of one, expression you have to but think for example about a situation say a more complex game okay um where you could have i don't know 10 possible realizations of the absolute what would be the result well the result would be that you have 10 of those so you would have a sum consisting of 10 expressions which is a, a lot of work but think about a situation where you would have 100 realizations or 10,000 realizations, well, the general structure would not change, right? You would, you would still have this, this sum, okay, as, as this describes the, the expected value, but you wouldn't have, instead of uh, two expressions, you would have 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or how, how many realizations that you have. But apart from that, the general approach would be the same. Why is that? Well, let's let's look at this thing. So, what we want to do is we want to we want to find the optimal uh, fraction that you put in in the last but one round, or basically in the last round into your into your game, okay, into your pot. So the C capital T minus one, and this should maximize everything here in the curly brackets. But the thing in curly brackets is just the thing in, in square brackets here, okay? And uh, this, is, this is just, it's, it's, it's very easy to, to find here now the optimal control because um, everything here is, is basically known. So I know the probabilities. This is what we assume, right? I know the probabilities. I know the realizations. I know the state that I'm in because, you know, I just put myself into the shoes of myself being in the, in the last round. So I, I know uh, what, what that would be. So the only thing that I need to determine is uh, the optimal control. So the optimal fraction that I, that I bet. And this is relatively easily found by just, you know, taking the first derivative or finding, finding the value of the admissible uh, fractions that that maximizes uh, this this expression that is highlighted here. Okay. So what you then would do, you would just take the first order condition uh, of of this expression. Um, so you would, in this case, where everything is is easy and nice, you would just take the first derivative of this expression with respect to ct minus one, and then you could then you could solve that for uh, for the optimal uh, CT minus one star. So this is basically the optimal uh, fraction that you would like to put into the game, okay? And this is just two P minus one, 
Okay, so the fraction that you would like to put into the into the uh, into the game is just a function of the winning probability. Okay. Does that make sense? So again, in the in the situation without uh, uncertainty, we would just could ref or we could just refrain from considering this expectation operator. And obviously, the random variable would then just be one realization. Okay, and and then you are then you are back in in the in the standard deterministic game. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to you you just maximize a more complex object, or an object that that consists of more parts. Okay? I think this is the this is the this is the better um, uh, the the better idea of of all that. <coughs> okay. Now, since we know what we want to do optimally, okay, we can plug this in into this definition. So this is just the maximum of this, but this is what we just calculated, right? So we are uh, we are, we can write we can use this at the point where the control that we choose is the optimal control, which we know. Doing so, we, we, we end up again with an explicit expression for uh, the value in capital T minus one. So now we stand at the, or we have the situation that we know the functional form of the Bellman equation after, basically after the game has been played and everything is nice. And we know the form of the Bell Bellman equation in the last round, okay? Explicitly, so basically we, we, we know that. So except for the, for the state that we are in, uh, but, but this is, you know, if, if you put yourself into the shoes of the, of the, uh, of the guy playing in the, in, the, in the last round, you know that, okay? So this is, this is basically, in a, in a sense, explicitly given. Okay, so the only thing that you that you or the next thing that you would do, would like to do is, well, you would like to to go again one period uh, back in time. Okay, and what you can write here is, you uh, you have again the the form of the value uh, function in the in the last but one round. You want to again pick the optimal uh, fraction of your wealth that you want to bet. And this is again uh, the 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 expected uh, value as of t minus one. But since you you know this expression, and the and the uh, uh, and the a star is just a this is just a number, right? You you know you know the uh, uh, you know the realizations of the epsilon. You know the p's, uh, and yet you can calculate this expected value. So the a star is just a number. So the only thing that you do not know, obviously, is the state that you are in, so your wealth, uh, just before you play the last round. But obviously, this is important, okay, for, for what to do in the, in the last round, so to say. Okay, but this is determined in the last but one round, because this is a function of what you do, so what your strategy is, and what would be the, what would be the realization, so whether you win or lose. Okay, so you have here this LNS T minus one, but you know by definition we have to go back uh, slightly. We you know by definition that this equation of motion holds. Okay, so you can you can plug this in. You can plug in this S capital T minus one is just the same as the S capital T minus two uh, plus. Uh, the uh, uh, plus plus the the, uh, the the amount of money that you that you win, so the, the growth rate of of your of of your wealth, which is a random variable, then you can plug this in. You can do the same as before. Now here here is here again uh, my my uh, uh, my screen ends. So you plug this in and you see 
or you witness that basically you have the the same structure in a sense as as before so you can you can write the relevant thing is again the same as as this form okay so you find the optimal uh, control in in t minus uh, 2 which is just uh, the situation that you are in plus the a star plus an expression that is very similar to what we had before taking the the optimal control uh, you can you can find the optimal uh, value and then you have again an explicit value an explicit ex expression for the value function in the last but one round so this is just ln s capital t minus minus two plus two times a star Okay, and now you can obviously iterate uh, this back. So you, you could take this, go back uh, one, uh, one, one step into capital T minus three. Well, and then you would, then you would find uh, a new value function. You could plug this in and, and, move, and move on. And the thing is, at least if you do it by pen and paper, um, it's, it's, the, the goal is to, to find some, uh, some, some common pattern Okay, and uh, what you what you then do is uh, when finding this this common pattern, you try to express a more general form of the value function, and this is then just uh, capital T minus k is just the log of the state that you're in in capital T minus k plus k times a star. Okay, and the k could be could be capital T, and then you then you then you are at the beginning of your game, and you and you know how how to value this game. Uh, namely by by uh, uh, by by this t times a star, and you also can derive <coughs> the optimal control for for every uh, for every uh, game that you play or for every round that you play, and in this situation this is constant. You always you always bet a fraction of two p minus one. Okay, so what you want to do is. Um, is if you uh, um, now now I'm slightly confused. So so if if the winning probability is one, obviously you wanna uh, you wanna um, you where you wanna bet uh, all of your all of your money. So so you wanna you wanna put uh, your your total uh, your total uh, initial wealth always into this game. I mean this is not a game anymore because you win every period. Uh, this is uh, this is very uh, very easy. Uh, and another thing is, if uh, if the winning probability is one half, you do not want to put anything into the into the bet. And even if it's smaller than one half, uh, you refrain from playing. Okay. Uh, here, if this is smaller than one half, you you would have a negative uh, fraction. This is due to the fact that we that we to be. I mean, if 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 we would have uh, written it down so uh, su super complete, then we would need to have an uh, um, a restriction uh, taking into account that this fraction is obviously always between zero and one. And here, if the if the winning probability is smaller than one half, uh, this restriction would kick in and keep you at the uh, at at the fraction that you want to bet uh, that is that is zero. So. Uh, apart from the from the uh, uh, from the uh, uh, more complex writing down basically of uh, tomorrow's value function, um, nothing is changed too drastically, I would say, compared to the to the deterministic case. Okay, was that somewhat helpful? Do we have questions so far? No. Okay, so um just just one one last one last word on that. Um when when you solve this, okay, and this is also true for the for the value function iteration in the uh, in the infinite horizon case, you always um, go through the problem in in this algorithmic way, okay. So you always you you take your Bellman equation, 
and, and hopefully you have you have you have a clear a clear structure of, of how the Bellman equation would look like. And you just take the right hand side of this Bellman equation and you 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 solve this basically for every state that that you could be in so for every proper state and for every realized sh or sh every shock realization okay and you 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 solve this then for the optimal uh, control and then you then you plug this in and then in the finite horizon case you move you move back one step in time in the infinite horizon case you would move in a new iteration but the but the general structure is always the same so you 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 do whatever the right hand side of the bellman equation says you calculate um, a, a form of the value function and put this again into the bellman equation this is then basically the new right hand side and then you move then you move on until you find that you found a solution again here in this case we have for every um, point in time we have a of, for every round that you play we have a different Bellman equation. So this this function um, now here not the not the functional form in the strict sense because this is uh, this is a linear in this in this in this in this a but this is always this always differs depending on the round that you are in. Okay, this is one of the the, the special things with the finite horizon case. In the infinite horizon case. This is a little bit simpler because it is not it, this the value function then does not differ with uh, with different points in time, but the approach the general approach is also there very similar to 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 this uh, to this algorithmic going through the uh, going through the Bellman equation. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Um, in a this is a very very elaborate way to to do this in a dynamic uh, programming approach or dynamic uh, optimization approach. In this case, is this even dynamic? Because um, wouldn't it be also possible to model this in a static way? Because the shocks are independent, and actually the strategy, the optimal strategy, is always the same. You you knew this from 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 advance or uh, uh, because because we walked through that. I'm not sure. I don't know because I, that the shocks are independent. I know from advance, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. This is an assumption. This is an assumption. And but I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I actually don't know. Maybe I know this from advance because. I also know that the winning is not um, dependent on my um, wealth. So it gets not relatively more the more I bet, right? Well, it, well the, 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 the money that you bet, you get back. So the, the more money you put into the pot, uh, the more you will get if you win. Yeah, so, the absolute value, right. Yeah. But the relative value is always the same, right? So if there was a better payoff, a relatively better payoff, uh, the more I bet, then the strategy might change, right? Because I want to maybe increase my wealth in the beginning as fast as possible, and then um, I get a better reward. Sure, if if you that that could be. I mean, if if you consider different games, you would you would have different outcomes. I think the. Uh, uh, the, the purpose of of this thing is is also not not really to uh, um, to uh, uh, to to enlighten you how to how to play this game optimally, but to to see the structure yeah. how, how, how how to do that. Because I mean that being said, um, you you can relatively easily um, hold on. You could relatively easy easily. I don't know. Um, extend this game, for example, by by taking those things into account, right? You could you could change you could change this this the payoff structure. You could also change the probability structure. Yeah, yeah, it's a good example, definitely. It's, yeah, it's 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 no problem to mm -hmm. to do that. This this here is super simple. Point, point taken, yeah. um, but it but I think it it nicely demonstrates um, how how similar this problem is 
in 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 a con in a contextual speaking to the to the de deterministic case, which is somewhat a thing that um, that at least puzzles me every time I think and talk about that, because wouldn't you wouldn't you just by by intuition by a naive intuition think well boy pff, you know taking stochastics into account must make everything so much more rocket science and so much more super complicated and the the truth is no it's not actually it's not as long as you are able to to write this expect uh, this expectation operator in a in a proper form and, and taking you know taking taking mental account of what that means um the the rest is 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 totally similar to everything that we that we did before and you will see in the in in the in the other example that we that we put into the computer that again also there the this value function iteration is also exactly the same the only thing is obviously that we that we need to come up with an idea of not only how to represent the value function this was the, the the big the big thing to do in the deterministic case but how to represent the expected value of the the, the expect the expected the expectation the expected value of the value function um and and uh, this this is the only difference um which is relatively tiny i would i, I would say and uh, again this example is just to 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 um to, to make this point that it's uh, that it's relatively easy to to uh, to implement um, and also if if you play around with that as I said I mean you you could also make the the probabilities a state dependent or you could make the probabilities I don't know de depending depending on the money that you put in or I, I don't know you you could you could change uh, the outcome structure in in any way but you know this uh, this expression in in this square brackets. It doesn't totally. It it, it 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 will look differently, but it but not conceptually. You know you have you have a different sum there, and okay, you know there, there's something else, but still you have some sum. Uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not my day today. You have a specific sum, and uh, you 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 choose just. Uh, the, the control that pops up in in different in different parts of this sum. Okay, so I think yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Thanks for the clarification. Uh, thanks for the question. <laughs>